Excellent to be here. Thank you for listening, because that is actually what I would like us to focus on for the next 15 minutes, is this idea of listening. I reckon my practice has been completely based in the world of sound ever since I was about six years old when I got free violin lessons and discovered that if you had a little vibrating box under your chin and you bowed it with horsehair, you got this, well, strange sounds coming out, but you got this great feeling here. And I think that that feeling connected with my bones, went through my body, and that for me was the experience of music. Your brain is completely overtaking the rest of your body when you just use these, our wonderful ears. There's me saying, oh my God, yes, come on everybody. Listening is about the whole body. It's not just about ears. I was actually deaf for five days last week. One ear just weirdly blocked up. And it was a really, really distressing experience not to be able to have any ears that were listening. Okay, without further ado, let's do some listening. I'm going to play you a piece. And if you feel like it, could you close your eyes? I'm only going to play the first minute. That piece was called Desire is the Fuel of the Soul. It was actually written for a theatre piece. It was a stage show of uh, Vivian, a uh, streetcar named Desire. I would like to immediately move on to the idea that if that piece of music had been playing to you through your body, um, and that it had been, you had been feeling it move around you, your experience of that piece would have been completely different. You probably all would have had a very different sensation. The question is why? Possibly you were out late last night, you're not quite tuned in today, you might be a little bit fed up with having to wait, um, and it was a bit strange. To be honest, I thought that piece is relatively straightforward to listen to. I thought it was quite an, you know, an easy listen, warm, relaxing kind of thing to get going. But let's think about the fact that if the bass sounds within that piece were actually moving through your bottom or up your back, and that, that little high do, do, do thing was spinning around your head, as you were lying down, or if you were in a sonic armchair. This thing here is the very first sonic armchair I made in 1997. Why did I make it? I made it because I realized that actually, if you played maybe unusual music to people through their bodies rather than just through their ears, they got a completely different sensation of the music. Also, it meant that wide varieties of people wanted to listen to it. I've been make, making music around the world for about the last 20 years and it got to a point where I was playing on stages largely to young white male audiences and I was like, hey, what about the people on the street? You know, I want the normal people to get this kind of stuff. How do we get more people to get more involved in listening in different kinds of ways of experiencing sound? And with the uh, creation of this chair, um, what I did was, I actually put, there's a subwoofer here under the seat, and then there are some mids, there are some tweeters here, and some mids in here, and uh, the sound that's in this piece is literally a recording from the inside of a transatlantic jet. Very simple um, loop with filters, so the whole thing just kind of sl slightly changes as it moves up and down your body and gives you a kind of washing machine massage sensation. The thing that blew me away was the fact that old women and kids would queue for an hour to have a ride in that chair. It was extraordinary. In actual fact, that chair has seen 40,000 bottoms in one show in Hamburg. So I thought, okay, well, there's something, there's something in this, this business of actually playing music through people's bodies. And then I thought, well, actually, okay, the chair is a relatively interesting thing to work with, but in fact, you're quite restricted because where are the frequencies that exist 
from where we can feel. And it's 100 hertz and below. In other words, it's the bass frequencies. We all feel a bus go by or a volcano rumbling if you happen to be in volcano country or the big subs in somebody's car as they go pounding by or in a club. You know, you feel that. That's going on all the time. And I realized that with a sonic armchair, there's only one space to put your subwoofer. Now, what about the fact that if you could have several subwoofers, and also, what about if you could have the body lying down? And what about if you could even create a social space? What about a bed? Okay, let's make a bed. So I did. I made a bed. This was an early, um, an early design of what I thought I could possibly do. And lo and behold, I built it. These inside are all car subwoofers, six of them underneath a resting body. And... Um, as is the way with these things, I'm sorry that these images are not quite as bright as they could be, um, but as is the way with these things, you don't really necessarily know what you're making until you've made it, until you've finished it. And this sonic bed was made just in time for a show in London in 2005, and what was quite extraordinary was the fact that it appealed to many, many different kinds of people. Um, they would lie in it for hours and the music that was being played was something that they might not necessarily have enjoyed at all. It's a shame you can't see these pictures because I'm showing you these because um, it gives you a sensation of how people were able to listen and how they got involved in listening. And I was so um, amazed by the potential of this project because not only was the sonic bed it's a portable interface it's uh it's like a portable venue and what i wanted to do was to make um music for different beds and facilitate other people to make music for other beds so i set up a collective project called music for bodies and music for bodies we worked with um, there was an architect there was a programmer there was a social uh, psychologist, there was an economist, there was a metal uh, metallurgist, a uh, materials physicist. And we would have these meetings to discuss how could we actually create these and design new interfaces that were, would enable people to feel music through their bodies and moving around and what could that do. And in fact, the whole project got very excited about sonic beds and suddenly I was being invited to make sonic beds in different places. So it's kind of impossible really to give you a sense, a real sense of what that experience is like. Here we are talking about it and playing it to you through speakers. But case in point, the only way for you to really understand what's going on is for you to be able to lie in one of these beds. So how could we do that? Um, this bed here is one that was made in Texas and the materials that have made it are recycled pieces of wood, unfortunately you can't see, but they are pieces of wood reclaimed from empty buildings, so it was where things had been blown and by the wind and the rain. Um, what I was, what we were trying to do and what was happening with these different beds in different countries, I called it the Worldwide Bed Project. and essentially the design that had been made in London we took to other countries and then worked with people from those countries to be able to use materials from that place and we would record sounds from that place show people how to use the software and make the new make the new pieces for for the beds with the idea being that these beds then stay in that country um, and other people can make music for them. So this is just an idea of what the software that, that was being 